Hello, everyone. So three years ago, one of my classmates got burned during a chemistry accident. He wore pressure sleeves during his recovery stage in order to help him recover better. And he told me that it was really uncomfortable for him to wear such pressure sleeves. And so I bought one pressure garment online, and I tried it by myself. He was correct. It was indeed really uncomfortable to wear such things because it was extremely tight, and patients have to wear it all day long. So in order to help him feel better in his recovery stage, I did some research online about burn treatment. I read a lot of papers, and I saw a speech made by a renowned burn expert. In the speech, he talked about the burn treatment and the pressure therapy. He said that current pressure therapy has a lot of has a lot of inaccuracies, and further improvements should be done to help、uh, make it better. And so, I tried to like did a lot of research online and read a lot of papers about burn treatment, and I managed to write a paper by myself. I collected the paper and I sent a lot of emails to different professors in burn treatment field. The email address was attached to the research papers they present online, and I waited for their response. Sadly, no one replied. It was the next morning when I received an email from the head professor in Shanghai Hospital. She was the head, one of the top researchers in burn treatment field, and I was so surprised that she was willing to support me. In his reply, she said that my idea was really good, and she was willing to support me to do further research in this burn treatment field. And so she invited me to Shanghai Hospital, and I talked to a lot of patients、um, in Shanghai Hospital. In, in our talk, I learned that current, currently pressure therapy has been used in a lot of medical field, and it is used to help these burn patients recover better. After their scars have appeared, and so、um, I feel a little strange because a lot of the doctors they told me that the tighter the clothes is, the more pressure it will exert on human body, and the better the patient will recover. I feel a little strange. Is this true? So I conducted several experiments, and this is one of the experiments that I, that I have made. So these are the two balloons. They are completely identical. However, one is blown to be bigger and one is smaller. They are connected by a tube, and there's a veil between them, which is closed right now. And so I'm going to open that veil and see what happens. Raise your hand if you think that if the when the veil is open, these two balloons will become the same size. Okay.、Um, so let's see what will happen. Well, the results show that actually they won't be the same. The big balloon will actually become bigger, and the small balloon will actually become smaller. Why is that? This result actually reveals the re, re, this result actually reveals the principle behind pressure and how it works. Pressure is determined by both the tensile force of fabric and the curvature of,、uh, of the object.、Um, that is the shape of the object. So、mm, the air will flow from a high pressure object to a low pr、um, pr pressure object, and in this case, from the big one, from the small one to the bigger one. And、mm, in, this means that in the burn treatment field, every patient has different body curvature and that is body shape. And to address this problem, we, I think of using the three D technology. Because 3D technology has already been applied in a lot of medical fields, such as orthopedics, but it hasn't been applied in burn treatment yet. And the 3D technology is actually a great way to help these patients, and、um, a great way to customize the pressure garments for each individual patient. And so I have to develop some 3D scanning systems because it is not,、um, it hasn't been applied in this field yet.
And these are the five 3D scanners that I have used in my project. And I conducted researches and experiments to test, test them and choose one between them to like trying to find out which one is the best. A lot of people actually question my work because they think that um, these sensors, maybe they are too cheap. And a, a girl like me cannot figure out these things by myself. I must get some help from others. And it was kind of hard trying to convince them all. But instead of arguing them by words, I try to use experiments and let the data speak by itself. Um, so this is the pressure mask that I've made. This is the result of my project. It's a prototype. Um, I went to the Shanghai hospital and I saw a lot of patients there. I got close with them and heard about their stories. I first met Xiao Ming two years ago at Shanghai Hospital. She was a 26-year-old mother. Um, she was a 26-year-old mother who was severely burned in a factory accident during work. I, saw, I first saw her wake up after her 15-hour um, operation with white gauze covering all her body except for her eyes and mouth left visible. She has suffered from extreme pain. Only the instinct to survive supported her. Doctor, will I die? I don't want to die, she cried. Seeing the helplessness and suffering Xiaomi has, I wanted to help her using the technology I've developed, the 3D technology. And so, I try to work with hospitals, in, with hospitals and the doctors, and so I, I also talk with the burn victims to make sure that my project has actually met their needs. It was kind of hard, but I managed to do so. My project was a success at a theoretical base, and it was on the broadcasted on national TV. I felt great, up, uh, I felt great proud of myself at that time, thinking that I can actually make a change to people's lives, thinking that I can actually make these burn patients live better. However, things were not as simple as I thought. When can I use your pressure max? Xiaomi asked me with great excitement the next time we met. Can I use it right now? Sadly, I had to tell her that she cannot because my project was only in a research phase and there's still a long way to go before it can be get commercialized. Therefore, I feel great disappointed because I failed to produce a product that was perfect enough that can be put into practice directly. I saw, her, I saw her still suffering from pain, because although Xiaomi has escaped the threat of death now, right now, but she still cannot take care of herself because of the adhesion between her fingers. She looks so disappointed. And the moment that I stepped out of the hospital, I was determined that I have to help her. I have to make my project and make it into something that can be really um, applied in real life instead of just a costly prototype. And so I went for a lot of specialists in software and I asked for help from 3D printed material companies. And at last, my prototype actually works. This August, Xiaomi was once again in the hospital to have her fifth um, skin operation. And she told me that she was really proud of me because she can actually use my pressure mask at that time. Before she tried on her pressure mask, she, she showed me a photo of her and her daughter. In the photo, she and her daughter was laughing and holding each other's hands. I saw hope in her eyes. I see her one day. She will be able to hug her daughter again. I used to think of engineering only as only something that to like you build something and to innovate something. But now seeing the stories of Xiaomi and other burn victims, I realized that engineering is more than that. Engineering is something that you can use to make actually make the society better and use it to make the world a better place for every person to live in it. And also um, there's, a, there's a sentence that, uh, that I love engineering for humanity, and it states my dream of like um, devoting myself in academic research while also um, use my time to have humanitarian endeavors. 
We have to understand humanities before creating things and use technologies to change the world. So here I stand talking to you guys about my research project, but it was more than a project for me right now. I want, to I want you guys to know about the living conditions of burn patients and the struggles they have suffered like when they are trying to re-enter the society. And I also want you guys to know that every idea has the power to shape the world. It's, it's not impossible for our teenagers like us to actually make something and use the technology to change the world. It's not that, that far away from us to actually build something and apply it in real life. And after all, I want, to, I want to say something to you guys, and that is, you're never too young to change the world. Thank you. Mm -hmm.